inspirational tapes, apologize for the quality of this recording. The technical quality was deficient in the original master, but I'm sure you'll agree that the testimony it contains is unique in the library. As I understand, you are hiding Jewish people in Holland. And the, and the Nazis, uh, the Germans, took you and, and because of this and put you into prison. Yeah. Uh, how long were you, were you in the prison? I was uh, 11 months a prisoner. First four months in solitary confinement, alone in a cell, and then in a concentration camp in uh, Holland, a German concentration camp, and then in Ravensbrück, the terrible place north of Berlin. And that's where my sister died. She died there. Yes. And in that time, God, God somehow kept you sweet and tender towards him. How did you do it? How did you keep from being just terribly despairing? What, what kept you buoyed up at this time? That's good, but you know what kept you? Who kept me up? Who kept you? <laughs> I, I can tell you, I... Uh, there are circumstances that you you cannot uh, do anything, and it was only the Lord who has carried me through. And that is so good that I have experienced that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had always believed. Now I know from experience that Jesus' light is stronger than the deepest darkness. And a child of God cannot go so deep, always deeper on the everlasting earth. It matters not how dark it is. His light is always there. Yes, yes. The devil is strong, mm. but his power is limited. And Jesus' power is unlimited. And you, you've been there, and you know. There was, a, was his grace always sufficient? There was never a time when his grace was not sufficient for you. Indeed, it was always sufficient, but sometimes I, I lost courage. You did? And yes, and I remember that once I said... When I looked on the stars, I said, Oh, Lord, all the stars are in your guidance. But have you forgotten your child? Call it a moon. And then, but I had my Bible with me, and that was such a great joy. And then in the Bible I read that the hairs of our head are numbered, yes. and God has the whole universe in his hands. That means that God has a telescopic and a microscopic interest in us. <laughs> and he, he knew you by name and everything about you. And he yes, loved you, yes, even yes. in the midst of Yes. Did, did you feel at this time that maybe some of the people who were holding you captive may have been under the power of demons? Or did you sense a demonic force doing some of these very cruel things? Yes, of course. That was, they were quite in the... Uh, in the power of the, uh, the devil. But they were, and you, you knew it. Though. Yes. Why did you think so? What, what showed it? Just their actions in general? Or yes, what? their actions and, the, and what they said. And the, the, they hated God and Jesus. They did? Yes, and the, the Bible was a forbidden book. How did you get that copy of the copy into the into the concentration camp? That was that was an, um, a miracle. Yeah. Uh, you know, w when we uh, entered, I had a little Bible, but it was a small Bible, but a whole Bible, mm -hmm. whole New Testament, and I had it hidden under my under my clothing on my back, mm -hmm. and I saw that they they uh, they we were uh, they took away everything what we had hidden, huh? Eh? Mm -hmm. And I was so scared that I said, Oh, Lord, send your angels when they surround me. Yes. But then I thought, yes, but the angels are, are spirits, and you can look through a spirit, and the Jewish people may not see me. So I said, Oh, God, uh, let your angels this time not be transparent. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can pray very unorthodox when you are in great uh, But God did it. The woman who stood before me was searched, and then my sister who was behind me, and they did not see me. And so I came in the prison with my Bible. But God just actually blinded them. They couldn't see you. The angel had just... We mustn't be too amazed when God does miracles. Well, of course. And then it was really so that when uh, we were there, I had to live in a room with 700 prisoners, and it was built for 200, and it was terrible dirty. But we had so many lies and fleas that 
The guards and the officers would never come into our room. They were afraid to get lies from us. That was good. <laughs> I can tell you, twice a day we had a Bible message. And that was the... God has used angel and rice for that. <laughs> and now you must think what that meant, that we had a Bible. The people around me, many had never heard of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And many died. But many died of, with Jesus' name on their lips. And God used Betsy and me to bring them to the Lord. That was worthwhile, all our suffering, even Betsy's death. To be used to to save a soul for eternity is worthwhile. Yes, whole life. And, and, and they were hungry. Was there any resistance among those prisoners to accepting Jesus, or were they all open to, to know of God's love? I... I cannot say that there was resistance. The people who didn't like to hear didn't come to my meetings. I see. The people who came were just uh, very hungry or it was a joy to speak to them about the thing. And, you know, uh, uh, during roll call in the morning, three hours we had to stand on the roll call, and that time I got my messages. And I... And every day the Lord gave me a message. And Betsy said, Corey, you have never preached so, uh, so uh, good as here. <laughs> and we were always very critical, uh, healthy critical. But she said, here your language is good. It is the, uh, the, your, the, the, um, the biblical uh, truth is, is, uh, is uh, so, so clear. And uh, it was just the Lord who spoke to me. Huh? Even in the midst of all that suffering, he just, his spirit came through. Well, that, of course, would give you the overcoming life. And yes, and uh, the Bible tells that we have not a spirit <coughs> of fear, but of love and of power and sound mind. And uh, the promise of the Bible are true. Quite. There, there are many people who, in this audience right at this moment, believe that there will be no suffering for Christians, that somehow when Jesus comes, that he will lift us up into uh, a place of glory with no intervening suffering. Now, do you believe that's the case? Uh, the Bible tells that the Lord Jesus has said, pray that you will be strong enough to come through all what will happen before my coming, and that Jesus is coming soon, Yes. I think we all uh, uh, can know. Have a, all the the signs of the time we can now read in the newspapers. Yes. And when these things happen, Jesus said, um, when all these things happen, that generation will not pass away before I come. And I believe we are the generation that these things happen. And but the the, the Bible tells that the Lord said. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And uh, um, so you think that's a definite, uh, that's a promise. Yes, uh, yes. No question about it. And, uh, and you know, you know, we mustn't be too amazed when when we have to to suffer for for the Lord. For uh, it is it is written in the in the Bible. Um, you know, I believe that we will be translated. Oh, sure, the best is yet to be. Yes. We will meet the Lord in the air, and then we will be with Him. The best is yet to be. But before that happens, I believe we will have to go through a part of the tribulation. And there is no tribulation. Sir, I have worked behind the Iron Curtain, and I can tell you, some said that 60% of the body of Christ is suffering. Now, uh, watchman, he said, when my feet were whipped, my hands suffered pain. And I believe we as body of Christ must suffer with that part that is suffering. Now persecution, terrible. But uh, I was once uh, in um, Usungura in Africa. And uh, I don't know the political background, but that week, every day, there was a new government, and every day Christians were uh, were uh, killed. 
And I remember that I stood there in the church. And I saw that the people were afraid. They looked at each other. Will he be killed this week? Will she be alive next week? Will I be? After all, will they kill me? And then I said, oh God, give me a message for these people. And the Lord gave me First Peter 4.12 from the translation of Phillips. Mm-hmm. And I read, now dear friends of mine, I beg you not to be unduly alarmed at the fiery ordeals which come to test your faith as though this were some abnormal experience. You should be glad because it means that you are called to share Christ's sufferings. One day when he shows himself in full splendor to men, you will be filled with the most tremendous joy. If you are reproached for being Christ's followers, that's a great privilege for you can be sure that God's spirit of power, the spirit of glory is resting upon you. And I show these people that uh, in heaven there will be a martyr crown and life is short, eternity is long. And uh, I told these people also that this is what you can read in my, my book, The Hiding Place, and what you also will hear and see in the movie that is made of that book, that my father I once said to my father, I was still a little girl, and I said, Daddy, I will never be strong enough to suffer for Jesus. And then father said, when you go to travel with a train to Amsterdam, when do I give you the train ticket? Three weeks before, I said, no, Daddy, the day that I go to travel. And Father said, that's what God does. And today you do not need uh, to, uh, to have uh, strength to suffer for Jesus. But the moment you will have the honor to suffer for him, he will give you all the strength. And then I was comforted. And I said to these people, when you have to, to suffer for Jesus, the Lord will give you the train ticket. There came such a tremendous joy in that uh, uh, in that church that the people started to, to sing a song I will never forget that some started it was at the end of the of the meeting and they start, started to sing there's a land that is fairer than day and by faith we can see it far for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we'll meet at the beautiful shore. And they repeated that singing, and so they left the church. And I heard still, in the sweet by and by, we will meet on the beautiful shore. Half of these people were killed that week. But the spirit of glory was waiting on them. And some time ago I was in the, the a big um, uh, congress in Lausanne in Switzerland. And there came a lady to me from Usumbura. And I said, uh, oh, tell me, how is the work going on? And she said, oh, the, the, the years, the... The radio has been closed, but now it is open and every day, 24 hours a day, uh, the re- radio conduct is bringing the gospel over Africa. I said, oh, what a joy is that. And he, I said, hey, tell me, how are, how are my friends? She said, your friends? They're all killed. Oh, when I heard that, I was so sad. And she said, she laid her hand on my shoulder and she said, but Corey, they are promoted ahead of us. And she smiled. And do you know, I said, and you, are you not in, in danger? Do you go back? She said, immediately after the Congress I go back. I oh, know. It can mean that I will be killed. But I'm not afraid. Do you see? This woman had not a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And that is what the Bible tells. Everything we need 
for times of tribulation is in the promises of the Bible. And uh, the Lord will give us strength. And that is the great joy. That is what I have experienced when I was in tribulation. There the Lord was with me and His strength was so secure. And you know when the securities and the, the, of the world all fall away, then it's the security in the Lord, the greatest strength. You know, speaking from Peter, Corey, uh, he said they that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin even as he suffered. Did you find that in the suffering somehow there was a purification in your own life, that somehow it, uh, the world in it sort of fell away and you began to draw closer to Jesus like you've never known before? You know, Paul writes in one of the, uh, the translations, uh, uh, the, the, one of the new translations, I read this text in Ephesians 4, 6. I count everything as loss compared with the priceless privilege of knowing Jesus Christ and of progressively more intimately getting acquainted with him. And that's what I experienced too. And then, you know, I understood the suffering of Jesus so much better than before. It brought my, my eyes to the cross, and the cross, and the cross, when I first saw the light, and we had to stand naked. Seven times it happened. First time was the worst. I said to my sister, I said, I cannot bear this. This is more cruel than all the other things that we had to go through. And then suddenly it was as if I saw Jesus at the cross. And the Bible tells, they took his garments. Jesus hung there naked. And by my suffering, I could understand a very little bit of the suffering of Jesus and made me so thankful that I could bear my suffering. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. Yes, that was the great privilege, the blessing that I got for my suffering, that I understood the cross better than before. Praise God. What do you think God is calling Christians to do today? And, and you know, in light of the suffering that you've had, these people in Bush and Bureau and and uh, in other places, what do you think God is calling Christians for today? What what task is He got for? There is a tremendous task for us Christians in this time. For never there has been such a sick world. And who is it that overcomes the world? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That means that when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you have to overcome a world that is terrible sick. I'll tell you something. It was when I came in the concentration camp. We were there for just a short time. And we were there in that room with 700 people. And uh, there was no room for them. It was a room for 200 people. Suddenly, some started to fight. That was a danger. Fighting made hatred. And these people were in such a tension. So when this hatred came in their hearts, there was a chance for the devil. And not only that, but very soon others joined in the fight. And we heard swearing and beating and crying but oh it was a hell and Betsy said my sister Corey let's pray and she started to pray and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed and when she prayed it was as if a silence came it was as if a storm was laid down till everything was quiet and then Betsy said Amen do you see the situation do you see the happening? Here was a room with 700 poor prisoners, and the devil tried to make them fighting and hating. Eh? And there was a, an old, starving woman that she starved after some time. 
And she saved the situation because the Lord gave her prayer. And that is a task we all can have. The, that what, what we have to do, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for your, uh, for your uh, leaders. Pray. Oh, there are so many people who, pray, uh, who need prayer. And that is a work, a work that we all have to do, a very important work. And I know some people say, I do not know how to pray. Yes, this man is a prayer warrior. And these people there, they are prayer warrior, warriors. But I don't know how to pray. And then I always say what is written in Romans 8, that the Spirit himself will uh, teach us how to pray. And I heard a very good little illustration. There was a little boy, and they said to him, you must pray. He had never prayed before. And he went home, and he was sitting in the corner of his room. And he knew one thing, when you pray, you fold your hands and you close your eyes. And his mother was in the same room, and she heard suddenly that he said, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. The mother said, what are you doing? He said, Mom, I, they say I must pray, but I've never prayed before. I don't know how to do it. So I said, Jesus, I give you all the letters of the alphabet. Now you must make a good prayer of it. <laughs> <laughs> that boy understood what Paul said in Romans 8. The Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray. And everyone can pray. Also you. <laughs> and that's the plan. Yeah, and it's very important. Yeah. And then you must think, there has never been such a terrific um, hatred in the world as now. It is what in the Bible is said that before Jesus comes, those who are clean will be cleansed, those who are filthy will be filled there. Everything goes to the top. It is now our either. There's nothing in between. And oh, what is there a terrible hatred. And the love of many will walk cold, the Bible says. And now, you and I, we are called to represent God's love in this world. And uh, the Bible says, live your lives in love. The same sort of love which Christ gives us and which he perfectly expressed when he gave himself as a sacrifice to God. You know, there is, there is a love that never fails. That is not human love. That is God's love. And that is not only God's love in his heart. But the love of God is shed abroad into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And that love we must live. And there is written, um, He has made us welcome into the everlasting love He bears for His Son. We are accepted in the beloved. This is a new, a new translation. Did you ever doubt your love for God? I doubted mine. Did you ever doubt God's love for Jesus? Never. And in to that love, you and me have been made welcome. Isn't that tremendous? And we can represent that love of God in this world that is in the grip of hatred and of fear. And that love is available. So the Holy Spirit. And there is one thing that there is uh, written in the Bible when we uh, know that Jesus is coming very soon, we must be sure that we are at peace with God and man. How is that possible to be at peace with God? Our sins come between God and us. But the Bible tells us very clear what to
to do with our sins. There are two ways to know your sins. When the devil tells you your sins, he says, and so you are, and you are proud, and you are unfaithful, that's exactly your character, and there's no hope for you, and you will always remain like that. Quite different, is it, when the Holy Spirit teaches and shows us our sins. It is always in the floodlight of the cross of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit says, for these sins of yours, Jesus died at the cross. And the Bible is very clear what he will do with our sins when we confess it. He cast them into the depths of the sea, forgiven and forgotten. It is not in the in the Bible, but I always think there comes a sign: no fishing allowed. <laughs> That's what the Lord does with our sins. He brought them out like clouds. Did you ever see a cloud for the second time? Never. When a cloud is is away, it disappears, and that's what God will do with our sins. So when we bring our sins to the Lord, He forgives and cleanses our hearts. And heart cleansed by the Holy Spirit, He fills. Uh, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, he fills with the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control. Just opposite of our, of our sins. <laughs> you know, I like that little poem of John Bunyan. He said, um, Run, uh, John, run, the law commands, but gives us neither feet nor hands. Far better news the gospel brings. It bids us fly and gives us wings. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> and so he says, love your enemies. When Jesus tells you that, he gives you the love that he demands from you. And that is how to be at peace with men. We have to forgive. I was not, I, I was not at peace with men. There was hatred in my heart. When guards were cruel for my friends and for Betsy and me, there came such a hatred in my heart. Oh, and then I learned to take the promise of five, uh, Romans 5 5. The love of God is shed abroad into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And I, I learned this prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love through the Holy Spirit who is given to me. And thank you, Father, that your love in me is stronger than my hatred. And the hatred went, and I could love my enemies. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Uh, but that is a joy that we can... That we can. Uh, let me ask you, uh, as you have been... Uh, most people would have retired a long time ago, uh, secure that you had suffered for Jesus, but now you're... Tramping for the Lord, this this book. Where are you trapped? You, you're all around the world, aren't you? This is book to anybody. It's called Tramp for the Lord. Yes, so. yes I. Um, it's, uh, Betsy once said to me, Corey, when we are free, we must travel over the world. We have a message. Mm-hmm. Because we can tell from experience that Jesus' light is stronger than the deepest darkness. She died. I was set free. And after the war, I started to go over the world. And I work in 63 countries. And now I am 82, not 84, or 82. <laughs> but uh, I'm 82, and uh, now I, I, I'm still uh, working. And now the Americans make me uh, to work hard for... I, it looks that way. You just uh, on the go. Six, Sixty-eight countries, though. Are you going overseas again? My times are in God's hands, and uh, you know the, that uh, f- that film that is made of uh, the hiding place uh-huh. that comes in the theaters, and that will come in the theaters all over the world. Well, no, you understand that when people have seen the story of Corrie ten Boom and the real Corrie ten Boom to come, comes to give a message, then uh, no, then people will come to hear, to see and to hear the real Corrie ten Boom. Well, I think they're doing it now without the movie, but they'll do it a lot more. <laughs> and you know that that film that is so so beautiful. Mm-hmm. That movie shows 
what it means to go through terrible suffering with Jesus. Praise God. And, because, and that is the message that we must know now. Because many people go through terrible suffering. You think in America we're going to go through suffering? Yes, sir. You think it? I believe that. Yes. It is what the Bible tells yes. that we can. But we have nothing to fear. Amen. Because Jesus is victor. And he will never let us down. Amen. 